Hi guys, Cool Dribbling here. So Harry's in the UK right now. Um, sorry I haven't done a video in, I think it's been a week. Um, it's been like a half term, so um, I haven't had a free house, but I have taken part in a podcast. So just to quickly plug that here before we get into this, I do a left wing uh, podcast with um, Heather and Daniel. Um, it's about kind of UK left politics and things like that. And we recently interviewed someone really interesting who's written a book. So we got an advanced uh, version of the book and we had an interview on there. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna put the link in the description box. Um, and if you're interested in general left politics here in Britain, <laughs> it's a lot, I'm warning you, it's it's dark, it's pretty dark. But if you're interested in that, if you're someone who watches these videos and you want to kind of get more into the context of what's going on here politically, join us um, and watch slash listen to the podcast. <laughs> okay, Harry is, is with us today. He is not here literally, <laughs> but he's in the UK with us. Um, and as expected, the press are not happy about it. I mean, the press are obviously scared. Um, there's, as we expected, there's a ton of nasty articles. I mean, I turned on uh, the BBC News just now, um, and this is what I saw on the screen. I didn't even, it was literally the first thing as I turned it on, I didn't even have to look for this. Prince Harry accused of wasting time by not giving evidence today. This is the BBC, right? And I know wasting time is in quotation marks, but you can see the vibe. The BBC likes to pretend that it's unbiased. Again, if you, if you want to get into this kind of thing, like the corruption of the institutions here, check out our podcast and the videos we make on this, that the BBC presents itself as this upright you know neutral institution and it's really not like it's got a slant and I think you probably know that I mean if you're from here if you're from Britain you'll know that if you're from the US and you're following this sort of coverage of Meghan and Harry I think if you have watched the BBC's coverage of them and the coverage of the royals what you'll see is that it's just propaganda and in some ways maybe it's easier for people who aren't in Britain if you're one of those people like does that feel easier is it much easier to detach that because for us you know we're sort of brought up to have this respect for the BBC right to think you know they wouldn't tell us lies <laughs> they're neutral and then you get older and you think wait a minute <laughs> something's very wrong here but yeah Prince Harry accused of wasting time uh, by not giving evidence today so it turns out this is actually a quote uh, surprise surprise <laughs> from the MGN lawyers as far as I'm aware here um, today was going to be the opening arguments anyway from the legal team and Harry was expected to be in court tomorrow there's a small possibility that he could come later today at the time of recording this right now he's not there but my understanding and I'm not a legal person is that he was gonna get here today and then do his stuff tomorrow um, and what I've seen actually I don't know how accurate this is I've seen that um, the MGN so that's mirror group newspapers have actually tried to rush their stuff through so that they can try and make him look bad essentially but yeah that's just so interesting because the BBC reporting that quote when it's literally coming from <laughs> the people accused right in the whole situation it's just so wrong because there are people who don't who don't follow this kind of stuff and obviously if you're on this channel and you're watching this you know if you watch these videos that I make you're like me probably and you take a big interest in it you know you've noticed and it's something that for whatever reason you've got into and now you can see the pattern and it's something that is just depressing but you can see it but for a lot of people they're not they're not following this because there's a cost of living crisis there's so many things going on here so just that in the background right and coming from the bbc this is not gb news and we need to kind of look at that and we talk about this on our podcast like when it comes to politics in this country different official institutions right different channels they have a lot of weight so the bbc considers itself the best of the best um you've got little things like gb news which are sort of coming up and you mean you, you'll know GB News is, is a really horrible nasty little channel but it is becoming more popular and frankly I do actually blame a lot of the bigger companies because I think people can see to a certain degree that they're just the same old propaganda and that they'll always protect the status quo right and I think people have like a valid feeling of frustration with that because they know that something's off and they're being lied to and then they just get like swept up by the right wing who offer them like oh you're right you are being lied to which is the true part and then they go it's because <laughs> they spin the wheel it's because of refugees or trans people or something come over here to our bigoted channel so I do blame the BBC because they're not being transparent but yeah that's the BBC and that was on the screen. That was just outrageous to me, I couldn't believe that. Right, meanwhile, over on ITV. So we're gonna look at um, a video I saw, I didn't see this live, um, from Good Morning Britain. Good Morning Britain is channel three. Um, you probably know Good Morning Britain because Piers Morgan used to be on it. It used to be Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid. Susanna was incredibly complicit. Um, you'll know the history with Piers Morgan and how they have relentlessly like 
covered the Meghan and Harry story. But I feel like even saying that's wrong, they haven't just covered it, like they've had a very extreme angle. And the thing that ITV does, which I think is kind of sinister in its own way, like there's something sinister about what the BBC does, which is trying to make things, you know, respectable and we've got no agenda and how dare you accuse us of not being neutral, meanwhile they worship the royals etc and they and they smear left-wing people. But, you know, ITV does things a bit differently, so they try and be a bit more cosy, right? So they give you your news, but they give it like a sort of entertainment feature where they give you like these presenters and these relationships and the idea is to make you feel comfortable and we're all here and this is what we all think together here on ITV and this family. And I'm not going to get majorly into this right now for this video, but there's been a scandal recently on the channel. And the reason why I'm not going to get into it in a major way here is because I don't have the facts. Um, <laughs> and I feel like, yeah, um, but it seems like a dodgy situation is what I'll say. It seems very dodgy, but they've now got a situation where there's been let's say allegations of misconduct from one of their big stars who they kind they kind of branded as like they kind of project them into your homes like they're members of your own family but really it's very sneering and it's very Tory and you know this is a show where they would actually during you know we've got an energy crisis and they would like do a spin the wheel game and you had to answer the phone sorry this is totally off topic but you'd have to answer the phone uh, with a certain like password if they rang you um and if you didn't you lost the money and this was like during an energy crisis and during covid and sometimes you'd get elderly people picking up the phone and these lovely little voices just saying you know hello who's speaking you know things like that and then you'd have these two people our name like philip schofield and holly willoughby laughing their heads off sneering down the phone like oh you got it wrong ha 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 goodbye and making all these horrible comments and it's like you don't know if one of those people is isolated in co because of covid or they've lost somebody or you don't know how poor they are or how much they needed that money and you're just sneering like it's a joke i I could talk a lot about this morning. I think I've mentioned it in so many videos because I think it's so dodgy. Anyway, misconduct allegations have surfaced against uh, Philip Schofield. He's now um, left the show, etc, etc. I'm not going to get into that in this video. It's something that, again, the media are focusing on very intently because I think they're trying to hide a lot of political stuff which is going on. But what I will say is that this individual, um, Philip Schofield, you know, he has suffered about a week now of, um, you know, the press following kind of what's gone on and there's been an interest. And he has done an interview, uh, quite a few interviews, I think, and he's, he's done an interview trying to generate pity, right, and to put his side of the story out there. And this is a man who, week after week, you'll know this for so many years, you know, they sat there on that show and they brought on people like Camilla Tomini, right? to trash Meghan Markle, to, to hear these nasty things about Harry and Meghan, to, to bring these figures who offered nothing and just stirred up hatred onto that show. And there often wouldn't be a counter argument. And this very man, you know, once said, he's done loads of things. He took a selfie with Boris Johnson. Um, and then he basically got really angry with Jeremy Corbyn, who's like our left wing person that they're smearing here. He was the former leader of the opposition who they've smeared. You know, it's so dodgy and biased. But he said, he famously said that it's time for Harry and Meghan to just shut up and go away. So, and now he's kind of doing these interviews and he's talking about how he feels, you know, in a dangerous place with his own mental health and he feels hated and he can't cope with it. And on a human level, you know, anyone, I don't want anyone to ever feel that way, you know, no matter what's happened, you know, I just feel like that's a line I don't want to cross in my mind as a sort of Christian, I don't want anyone to feel bad. But what I will say is, what has Megan ever done, right? This is somebody who is suspected of misconduct, right? And who admits that themselves. And we don't know the full details, but what did Megan ever do? Why on earth? Did that hate campaign go on and on and on? And now these people are saying, oh, be kind, be kind, you know, show empathy. You never know what someone's going through. You know, we care about safeguarding and people's mental health. When have they ever cared about safeguarding people like Megan, right? They don't care. You've got Jeremy Clarkson and Piers Morgan, I kid you not, now coming forward to say, stop hounding this man. And they can they continue to hound Megan. It's just so, it makes me so, so angry. It's just so fake. It's so fake. Um, and again, it's the same with Jeremy Corbyn. Um, if you're a person that's been totally dehumanised for whatever reason, maybe you're a left winger, maybe you're a woman of colour, maybe you speak up against an institution which is popular, you speak up against power, 
you're going to get smeared and you're not going to get any empathy, right? You're going to be completely dehumanised. Compare that to somebody who actually is accused of doing something which isn't great and you're going to have these same people suddenly coming out for you, like, in defence of you. And it's not consistent, you know, this is not me making a judgement call about how we should treat people, I'm just saying it's not consistent. Like, it's so obvious that when it comes to people like Harry and Meghan and Jeremy Corbyn, there is a, there's a different dynamic at play, right? It's totally different. So who did they have on Good Morning Britain this morning? I'm sorry that took so long. But, um, okay, so the presenters were Susanna Reid, who you'll know because she was the complicit one who sat with Piers Morgan. Now she is, this is just my opinion, She's complicit. She's not as bad as Piers Morgan in views, but she certainly sat back, you know, let him go off on stuff. And again, I'm not saying that, you know, a woman has to be accountable for what a man does, but if you're a presenter on that show with that power, there is absolutely no reason that you should be sitting there complicitly. You know, at no point that we're aware of did she try to stop any of this, and many times she kind of went with the whole, oh, Piers, aren't you awful, terrible Piers? And then it became apparent that the Piers Morgan obsession was actually really worrying and he got called out by actually a male colleague um, and then it started turning around more uh, and people suddenly got a little bit more brave <laughs> yeah it's funny isn't it how everyone thinks we should stand up to power everyone thinks that that's the sort of world we want but when it actually comes to it how many people out there genuinely will put themselves on the line and speak up or how many people will wait for somebody else to do it, right? Who will think about their career and their prospects and, and wait? See how it goes for somebody else and then jump on when it's safe. Now we need people like Harry in this instance, who's uh, taking the alleged phone hackers to court, because without those people, nothing changes, right? Someone's got to be brave enough to say, right, I'm the shield, I'm going to go out and do it. And you know what? I don't care if you're with me or not. I'm gonna do it because I think it's right. I know history is gonna judge me well, it doesn't matter what you think of me right now, and usually what we see is we see other people thinking, oh yeah, 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 I agreed with him all along, I just, I just didn't want to say anything, but I always agreed, and it's like, no, I, I don't believe that. It's also the same with social issues, it's like, people are considered to be radicals, like in the civil rights movement, for example, like dangerous radical people, suffragettes were at one point, um, you know, LGBT campaigners, oh, they're so dangerous, terrible people. And then when it becomes more normalised because these people have lived their lives being smeared for standing up for what was right and standing up for other people's rights, everyone else suddenly goes, oh yeah, yeah, we've all moved on as a society, as if it just happened, as if these people didn't give up their lives and their mental health to do that, right? And And it's just, it's really frustrating, it makes me angry. So Susanna Reid and Ed Balls, who used to be like a Labour MP, he's now restarted his career as a sort of, uh, you know, entertainment figure, you know, all light-hearted stuff, you know, let's... <laughs> Let's not talk about Iraq, let's not talk about any of that. No, okay, since I've mentioned it, I will say it. What I mean here, what I'm alluding to here, is that Ed Balls basically um, voted against an inquiry into the Iraq war, which to me just seems weird, because why? If you genuinely believed that it was right and you had that information, why on earth would you be against an inquiry to find out? Right? Something's really off there. Because if you genuinely were taken in, then you're somebody who should have known better but made a mistake. Right? Why would you vote against the inquiry? Very, very dodgy. <laughs> I don't trust people like that. No, no, don't investigate it, they say. There's no need. Why? <laughs> why? Okay. But they invited on this morning, uh, Angela Levin, an old favourite, um, there's a video I've got on here, I'll put it in the description box, a video I've done about Angela Levin before. And also we have Tom Bauer, who I've heard his name before, I have never seen this man in the flesh before, I've never heard him speak before today, and somehow he looks and sounds exactly as I imagined. <laughs> Exactly as I imagined. And I just want to say as well, right, all the people saying, oh, Harry's so irrelevant, you know, no one cares, no one likes him. And, and you know, it, to be fair, in other videos, like, I certainly think the British public has been fed a smear campaign to hate him. But also, I feel like I don't want to be too... Sometimes I get depressed about it, about how successful smear campaigns are, because they also did it to Jeremy Corbyn. And sometimes I sit there and I think, so many people are so hateful, but sometimes I can forget that actually a lot of people don't feel that way. You know, sometimes I do get depressed about it, but a lot of people do support Harry, I will say that. I think a lot of young people. And I also think sometimes the forums that people use, um, I think maybe generationally, if you were to ask like my generation and below, I think you'd find quite favourable. Uh, my perspective is I think you'd probably get quite favourable responses. But the sort of people that, it depends what spheres you look at, right? If you're looking at kind of Facebook 
boomers no offense to the lovely boomers out there but within that age bracket you seem to get quite a few royalists you know quite a few pro royal family but they don't want to think about why they're pro royal family in that group here in the uk at least we have quite a lot of that so i guess it's kind of generational and i also have this theory that i think a lot of people and again i'm not saying this is all boomers please forgive me lovely boomers out there. <laughs> there's many many of you but the ones who are very loud and talk about this i sometimes think that they're projecting their own frustrations because i often hear people saying things like how dare harry you know how dare harry talk about his family in that way and how dare he say this and that and in my mind i'm thinking I wonder if their adult children are maybe not happy about something that went down and they're now in this mode of like, oh, they're so ungrateful, aren't they? They're making it about their own kids, right? <laughs> I feel like in so many of them, that's the vibe. It, it, and it's like, it's not Harry's fault if maybe your kids don't think you did a great job. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, there are TV cameras set up like nonstop filming just to see Harry arrive. So all these people saying, oh, you know, he's irrelevant. Is, is he irrelevant? I really don't think so. I haven't seen non-stop cameras for any events that William and Kate have been to. I mean, I didn't get to this, I didn't make a video on it, but um, I believe recently Kate showed up at, was it the Chelsea Flower Show? And uh, according to sources, it's a viper's nest, isn't it? Like, you know, oh, she overshadowed Camilla and they weren't happy about that. And, you know, it's, it's just operating like Game of Thrones there, isn't it? Like, I'm thinking to myself, who's leaking that? Like, which department, which PR team is leaking that? <laughs> going on there you know the pr war is being waged but there was a lot of a sense that the king and queen were being uh kind of outshone by kate shall we say and interesting some of the articles and magazines that were kind of split on that it looks like kate's pr team are doing wonders like they're actually working miracles here because it seems like she's outshining the actual king and queen right now and as i keep saying i don't know where william is <laughs> i never see him on any magazine I really don't know what's going on there. But I would honestly say, you know, just speaking as someone who's kind of been following the magazine articles and output, I think Harry and Meghan are a huge draw. I think after that would probably be Kate. I think that seems to be the order that we're going in at the moment. So they had Angela and Tom on Good Morning Britain. And first of all, I, I've, I've transcribed it and I'm going to read it to you. But something to bear in mind is I was quite pleasantly surprised in places here because I think Susanna Reid actually stands up to them a lot. And, you know, Susanna Reid isn't an evil, terrible person or anything. I think she's incredibly complicit with Piers Morgan, and I just don't necessarily trust those sorts of people. She does do well in this interview, I definitely will say that. But also what I want to say is that thinking beyond that, like, the bar is so low, because Good Morning Britain has invited on two guests, two guests to talk about this. Bear in mind, Harry is, in this case, the alleged victim of wrongdoing, right? The, the case is going on to see if he was a victim of wrongdoing that can be, if it can be proved or not. Obviously, if they can't prove it, it doesn't necessarily mean he wasn't a victim, but that's, that's what the case is doing, right? So ITV gets right in there with the victim blaming and invites on two very heavily anti-Harry people. And apparently that's, that's balance. You know, it would be too much even to have one of them on, I think. Because essentially, this is, a, this is a trial about phone hacking, right? It's about the MGN. So if you're actually going to get somebody on your show for this, wouldn't you need, like, I'm thinking a legal person, right? Someone who could explain something of interest, which is, you know, how the trial's going to work and interesting legal information. Instead, they've got two people who have made their money from smearing Harry to smug, self-satisfied and embarrassing bitter individuals and i will say they get totally shown up in this interview but before we go too overboard on that and kind of rejoice in what happened let's also say that good morning britain is incredibly complicit they did not have to invite these people on the show they have nothing they genuinely have nothing to offer on this right angela levin spent a very small amount of time with harry once and from that point on you know she's been like uh, camilla's biographer i made a video about all the mean and nasty things she says about megan all the time she's bitter, she's unkind, she just is, I rarely dislike a person as much as I dislike this woman because she just, she radiates bitterness and spitefulness and unkindness, you know, I, it's just one of those people that unsettles me, I, I just find it, it's like people who only get energy from being genuinely unkind and who don't feel empathy for other people, I just hate it, I really really hate it. And then you've got Tom Bauer who, right, this is, I looked him up because I've heard his name and this was the first thing I saw, so this is him writing for the Mail. You can't deal with narcissists like her. Biographer Tom Bauer tells Palace Confidential that King Charles should cut the Montecito royals off and Harry and Meghan should have no role in Britain. So he's an author 
who has openly written and made money he's called megan a narcissist right and that's just the first thing that came up for the mail and we all know angela levin and what she's up to and how she goes on gb news which is i believe a hate channel these are the people they brought on to discuss this so it fell to the actual presenters to offer some sort of balance and even that is skewed because sure it made angela and tom look bad but to be honest that's not hard because it is becoming increasingly embarrassing and I wonder, like, do they have television sets? Like, can they, they watch their own interviews? Because why would you put yourself through that? It's humiliating. I mean, I would be so embarrassed. They just come across like, I can't even tell you what they come across like. It's it's kind of almost funny, right? It's, it's so bizarre that it could be a comedy, but it's not. And that's where we're at. So yeah, I just really wanted to keep that in mind because although it is good to see them kind of shown up in this way, this is not a Meghan and Harry friendly channel. They are, again, using them you know, they're very much a kind of, oh, well, oh, sure, they're bad and they've done some bad things, but it's time to leave them alone now. They're those sort of moderates. But for me, I just feel like there is the truth and then there is, like, lies, <laughs> right? I don't, you can't be neutral in a situation where there is the truth and there are lies, right? There's one truth. There's one version of the truth. And the people who try to sit on the fence in the situation of Harry and Meghan, it just makes me angry because that doesn't make you look mature. It just, it's just allowing people to be abused, right? It's just victim blaming. It's trying to, because it makes victims feel bad. It's putting this, this idea out there that sure, the victim's in the wrong and sure, the perpetrator's in the wrong. Can't we all get along together? And it's like, no. If that is your version of, of truth and neutrality, it's no better than the very worst channels, right? Because you're moving the goalposts. You're making people believe that there is an okay middle ground to have, which is denying reality. I'm not saying people can't have their own perspectives on this, but people are losing their minds. What has Megan done? What has Megan even done for there to be two sides? In this situation, in this case, sorry for like going off on this, but Harry is somebody who was stalked all his life, right? Regardless of whether or not they can prove that he was hacked, he was, we know, stalked from the time he was a child. Photographers pursued his mother and made her cry all the time. And then when she died, they took pictures of her dead body. Like, where's the two sides to this? It, that's not the case, right? It's not a situation where there are two sides. And when it comes to abuse, right? When it comes to a victim coming forward, it's not mature and smart to sit in the middle like, oh, they're both as bad as each other. If you don't know the facts about a case, fair enough just say you don't know the facts about it and don't speak it does nobody any good because victims are watching this and it's just awful it's really really scary because megan is obviously a victim and in this particular court case harry is quite obviously the victim okay so ed balls begins this and he says that harry has put himself in the frame and that he's leading the charge and he sounds kind of admiring here and then they put it to angela and tom i will stop saying this in a moment but just even the thought that they got invited on here and paid when they have no no knowledge on the situation. They're not legal experts. They are just paid trolls for engagement and they brought them on to talk about it. Like, where's the duty of care that ITV keep talking about? Okay, so Ed Ball says, is this a wise decision for him or should he have left it to others? And just before I get to what they say, I, I wonder, I wonder what these people will say. I wonder what Angela and Tom would say to that. Take a guess. So what Ed Balls is essentially saying is that, yeah, sure, maybe he's in the right, but maybe was it was it clever or unwise to come forward about it? And just the fact that that's the opening question. And, and yes, they are sympathetic to Harry in this, but even that is not good enough. How is that the way it's being framed? Why is the first question, but is it really wise for the victim to come forward about the alleged abuse? Because, well, it might not go well for them. They might have power against them and they might look foolish. Like, how are they leading with that? It's disgusting. Okay, and this is what Angela Levin says. I'm glad we all get to hear what Angela Levin thinks about this. I think it's completely unwise. I think when he says that this is going to be his life's work, it's even worse because I think it's tragic. I think it's also arrogant, so it's a terrible mixture together. He won't be able to answer all the questions and the attacks he's going to get from these top lawyers. He's had a nice, he's had nice soft interviews with people who don't want to upset him in case he walks out or tells them to go. So he hasn't got the experience. 
He's also extremely negative. His whole life now seems to be negative, going right back into the past. His mother's death, he's going to blame them for that, not taking into account that she didn't have a safety belt on, or that the driver was drunk. You know, it's just one way of thinking. Also about Chelsea Davy, his girlfriend before her. He says they ruined that relationship. I mean, that's 13 years ago. Okay, so let's go through her response here. So first of all, of course, she thinks it's completely unwise. Why would somebody like Angela Levin, who has aligned herself with power and is herself a bully and a troll why might she think it's unwise and want other victims watching to think it's unwise to speak up about being bullied right or abused i wonder why <laughs> i wonder why she might think that she then says that she thinks it's tragic that he says this fight's going to be his life's work but then also arrogant so no that doesn't make any sense like please i wish people would use their brains like if it's if you genuinely think it's tragic in the sense that you think he's been mistreated then you can't also be sitting there shaming him and trying to scare him which is essentially what they're doing and other people like him into not speaking you are part of the tragedy like you don't get to sit there and say oh it's, it is tragic this whole thing when you're part of the press doing that it's so sick and the idea that it's arrogant, again, we have that with victims. This is about so much more than Harry and Meghan, right? They are the avatars of this. But right now, they are using Harry and Meghan as the avatars of, of wokeness, right? Or people who are in minority groups, or people who are victims of systems, right? Whistleblowers. Basically, the idea that if you come forward, if you dare to be brave enough to take it to court, then in fact, you're arrogant. They need to reframe this because they can't have people watching this thinking it's brave or admirable, right? No, it's got to be arrogant. In fact, you're narcissistic. Getting justice makes you narcissistic. And why would somebody say those things, right? Why would somebody have that mindset? You've got to think about the sort of people that would advocate that because it would be in their interest. And you've got to ask why. Why would it be in their interests to try and scare people into silence? You know, talking about all oh, the nice soft interviews with people who don't want to upset him in case he walks out or tells them to go and that he hasn't got experience. Basically, again, scaring victims because it's implying that, oh, if you want to take this kind of thing on, then you've got to be trained, right? You've got to have experience because you're going to get completely grilled. So a normal person thinking about the situation, if you're thinking about preparing somebody for court, right? you would just be thinking in terms of stick to the truth and you're fine, right? Just speak the truth. But they're talking about it as if, oh, it's very unwise because he's simply not prepared. You know, he's he's emotional and you can't be emotional. And again, it's, it's victim blaming in a really insidious way because victims are going to be emotional a lot of the time. Victims are going to be angry about things. They are going to have suffered injustice. They're going to feel hurt right? A lot of people develop mental health issues because they are abused. Also, abuse victims are made to feel unstable. They might find it difficult to handle stress. They might be very fearful of people being unkind to them. They might have been made to feel like they're insignificant, right? Or they're stupid or they're not worthy. And again, it's, it's this way of like, scaring them thinking this is the massive like this is the army you're going to face here right you are one small person and you've made a big mistake because you are going up against great power and rather than the message being wow how courageous that is and actually maybe we should support victims doing this it's oh how unwise how unwise what sort of a world do they want to be living in like how is the world ever going to get better why won't people think like this? It's ridiculous. Like she says that his whole life now seems to be negative and going back into the past with his mother's dead. Well, let me just say something. They say this about victims all the time. If you're a victim, right, who suffered childhood abuse, right, or trauma, it's very probable that you'll feel negatively about those experiences because they were horrific and abusive, right? Because you were traumatised. And because the child shouldn't be abused or traumatised or made to feel like that. You know, Harry's gone through a great loss. What does she expect? He's going to be happy about that. Like, he's going to be thrilled. You know, he just has to move on and be happy and see the bright side of the fact his mother was hounded by press in the last moments of her life and that they photographed her dead body. Right, sorry, is he not happy enough? Our abuse victims just not happy enough is that the problem it's not negative and i know i keep saying this but it's so important in today's society because it applies to every sort of victim right if you're somebody who suffered racism they'll go i'll oh, stop being so negative and it makes you feel like you're going crazy because you're thinking what do you mean stop being negative like you were being racist that is negative <laughs> But no, calling out the racism is negative, calling out abuse is negative, and the projection here as well. Because this woman is one of the most negative people. I haven't seen her smile once in a genuine manner. There's a kind of 
spiteful, bitter smile she does, like an enjoyment smile. But there's just an absolute joylessness. And then she talks about, oh, how tragic it is. But then she mentions, oh, that actually she wasn't wearing a seatbelt and actually the driver was drunk. And you know what? First of all, how sick of you. How sick of a human being who, you know, speaks about, oh, I was close to him. I knew him for a certain amount of time. So I'm sorry, that's a child who lost their mother. I feel like they're allowed, even if you don't necessarily agree with it, they're allowed to have those feelings. Like, because this is what I keep thinking. And I, and I completely think that... Part, I, I honestly believe that the reason that the crash happened for a number of reasons but it wouldn't have happened if she wasn't being pursued by paparazzi right it just wouldn't have happened of course it wouldn't it wouldn't have panned out that way she was hounded she was hounded constantly you know even if she hadn't died then at that time it still wouldn't make it any better like the the trauma that she faced and the abuse and harassment she faced and the trauma and harassment her children faced but let's just say you know in Angela Levin's world let's just say that Harry is completely delusional. He's not, but let's just go with their worst case scenario, right? So, oh, he's completely delusional with grief. And because of this terrible grief that he's suffered, he's now gone completely nuts and, and he's blaming the press for everything. Right, if they genuinely thought that, where is the empathy? Where is the kindness? They're not talking about him as if we care very much for him and we're so sorry and we want to help him and we hope he heals. There's none of that sincerity, right? It's a total lie. And they do this to victims all the time, right? Oh, they're just, they're just crazy. They're just delusional people. But you know it's a lie because there's not real concern. If you can't muster your empathy for that person, that is a clue, right? That is a big siren going off because if you believed if you believed that he was really grieving that much that he had accidentally blamed the wrong people why would you have done this hate campaign over such a long time why would you even have ill feeling towards him if you believe that they don't believe it they don't believe it they don't talk about him like he's somebody that they really pity but they think he's lost his mind they bring him down at every opportunity if you genuinely think someone is so unwell is that what they do? Is that what you do? It's not what a normal person does, right? It's so obvious they tell on themselves. And she also says at the end, oh, um, but this was 13 years ago. What? So ITV is now platforming somebody. At this time of all times, let's just say, while ITV is going through this kind of situation, they're platforming this kind of victim blaming that, oh, well, doesn't really matter, <laughs> you know? Time's gone by, doesn't really matter anymore, I guess. They're not even coming at it with empathy. They're not even saying, yeah, that must have been really horrible for him. You know, what a horrible thing to have happened at the time and we feel really bad for him. There's none of that. They are gleeful, right? They're really enjoying it. So one of the presenters says, but if they broke the law and hacked his phone, he's not wrong to be angry or upset about that. The question is, should he be public about it? And again, like, I know the presenters are kind of, they do defend Harry in this interview, but why is that a question that was allowed to be asked? Right? It's not even a question of, is he in the right or not? It's, should he do this publicly or privately? And it's not our business. I mean, we're now policing victims on how they go about it. They don't realise, like, the, the strength it takes to even come forward, and we're now, all oh, but maybe he should have done it privately. Well, why should he have done it privately? This is something that needs to be done for the good of everyone else. The papers need to know, the tabloids need to know they can't treat people like this because it protects all of us. But, oh, he sh maybe he should have done it privately. No, it's not on an abuse victim to do these things privately. Of course it's not. Uh, and then Angela Levin says this. No, he shouldn't be public about it. He can get as angry as he likes, but it's not going to help him, particularly if he has mental health issues. He needs to be kind to himself. He needs to be positive. He needs to look to the future. He's got a wife he still absolutely adores. He's got two children, a beautiful home with 16 bathrooms and a pool and a tennis court and all that. It won't ever wipe it out, but it will enable him to feel positive and have confidence in himself instead of which he's instead of which he's just a moaning, groaning individual. OK, so let's go through some of that. He can be as angry as he likes. And she says it with meanness, right? He can be as angry as he likes and I don't care. And in a video I made before, I spoke about how she warned Megan of speaking up against people who are more powerful than her. Right, she likes to use power to intimidate people. It's not going to help him particularly if he has mental health issues. And this is what they do to Diana. Again, they do this to victims all the time. Often victims will have mental health issues because of the abuse they've suffered. Or they'll be told they have mental health issues when they actually don't because they're being abused. So it's just an ableist way to act like, anyway, they're crazy. Oh, they're crazy. You know, throw that out. You know, nothing they say can be believed. They're just mad. Again, he needs to be kind to himself. He needs to be positive and needs to look to the future. This is a woman who literally spend so much time 
being negative about somebody who who doesn't care about her doesn't really know her she's got this weird ownership over harry and megan right this weird spite these people don't like her they don't care about who she is and she spends all this time being so negative meanwhile telling them oh you guys need to be more positive like how are they supposed to be more positive i mean imagine this woman like talking about you constantly this annoying woman who has no knowledge and is so bitter and doesn't own a mirror apparently because she can't see how ridiculous she looks like how are you supposed to deal with that positively <laughs> right i would be actually afraid i think i'd be like what is even like what's going on there like i feel like this is a very one-way relationship where you're kind of obsessed with us right and you're kind of making money off us and that doesn't make me happy <laughs> you know and again it's it's all a trick because when people come forward like harry is, is coming forward now and he's holding power to account it is because he is pursuing happiness right it is a myth when they tell victims that you know oh you'll only be happy if you forget it right no it's true that moving on helps you be happy but the way in which you move on is different for different people we certainly shouldn't be seeing on one of the main channels it being kind of presented as if taking something to court right when you've been stalked your for your whole life and there's documented evidence of this implying that that's not a positive move is just gaslighting right it's a lie of course it's a positive move and we talk about this all the time when people want to change systems for the better it's very positive you know people want social justice because they want a better world right they want a happier world they want to bring more positivity into this planet and the people who live here we want people to be happier in general and that's why people sometimes take it upon themselves to say I'm going to battle this now and I'm going to do it for future happiness and so I can be happy and so the people that come after me can be more happy and if we all did that right in our lives I feel like the world would get so much better you know when you look at people campaigning against racism for example right so say let's let's go for civil rights era again so the people that were campaigning for that were doing it out of love right they were doing it out of positivity because they believed that things could be better they could see a better way and they wanted to be part of that yet they were portrayed as negative dangerous people right oh they're always dwelling on the bad things that's the absolute opposite of what was going on you know if we look back on that now we think about the great work they were doing we see that as incredibly positive and brave and admirable but at the time they would have been seen as oh no they're bringing the mood down oh they're always complaining about everything they're dangerous radical people and the fact that she i'm sorry so she then brings up the fact that they've got 16 bathrooms why is that relevant we are literally this is a court case about whether or not this this man who at, the, at some points in this was you know a child was stalked by the press right and we're now talking about oh but the victim has 16 bathrooms everyone so you know let's not listen to what he's saying why is that relevant literally why is that relevant this isn't somebody who has a problem with wealth is it this is camilla's biographer this is a pro royal person so what's that about she actually calls him a moaning groaning individual that's all she does that's all she does she moans and she groans and she looks smug and she says really bitter things and things that aren't really that intelligent they don't actually make a lot of sense to be completely honest but she says it in such a way that oh i'm right you know oh yes no i don't you're, you're completely wrong and i'm going to say something really mean and bitter and i have the confidence to say that but it's like why all she does is moan and groan about these people like I only had to dis I had to find out who she was, right? I discovered this woman's existence following this Harry and Meghan thing because she's so frequently getting involved in this situation. So, but these people, they moan and they groan and it's their whole careers, right? They Their careers are making life more difficult for a couple much younger than them that they don't even know right and that's that's their lives and that's their careers and that's that's their hard work and they sit there and accuse harry and megan of oh no they're they're grumbling and being negative it's like your whole the sum of your life right what you're known for is being negative about people that you don't know and you're not doing it in the case of like you know you're not trying to solve inequality and you're not doing it you know as a sort of criticism to make the world a better place you're just doing it to silence them because you feel slighted, right? And because you support power structures and it makes you feel powerful 
to, you know, put down people who go up against the power structure because it makes you feel like you're part of it. You know, imagine that being the sum of your life and it makes me really, really sad because what a waste. To be fair, Susanna Reid does actually say, she says, I'm not sure that having 16 bathrooms lessens his grievances. It feels as if he has been hard done by. I mean, we know that Prince Harry does not like, to put it mildly, the way that he is treated by the British press. And then I believe this is Tom Bauer. One of them says this, but I think this is Tom Bauer. Um, he is less coherent than Angela Levin. So yeah, you're in for a treat. Well, he is a victim of his own misfortune, this man says to, to begin his, <laughs> his part of this segment. Just think about that for a moment. He is the victim of his own misfortune. That doesn't even make sense. On, on a level of just words and meaning, that doesn't make sense. He is a victim of his own misfortune. I'm convinced these people just say things. They say things in a certain voice and with a certain smug tone. And other people go, oh, sure, they must be clever people. He's got one of those voices. It sounds a little bit like Charles himself, you know, very, very high up in the voice and doesn't really doesn't really bother to use very much diction, you know, not a lot of movement on the mouth there. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, people can't help the way their voices are and their accents. But what I will say is that we definitely have a situation here in this country where it's the same with Boris Johnson. Sometimes we hear a voice of a certain type and a certain confidence, especially when it's a white man, right? And we automatically think, oh, wow, like intelligence without looking at what's actually being said. So you've got a situation where you might have somebody who's working class. They might have an accent, which is, I don't know, let's say Birmingham or Essex or somewhere. And people will instantly dismiss them, right? They'll go, oh, they're just you know, they don't have anything important to say, oh, they're just reality TV people, they're this and they're that. Because there's no respect, right? Especially if it's women. And yet we can have men with these kind of very, very posh voices who seem like they've gone through, like, the private school system and everything. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, people can't help the way they're brought up. And it's great if someone goes through that system and they come out the other side of it and they decide, I don't want to be part of that. You know, I'm going to use what I've got to try and help other people. And that, for example, is what people like Harry has done, right? And Jeremy Corbyn has done. But certainly... If you actually listen to what he's saying, take away the accent, right? And the way he carries himself, which is like he's a royal himself. What he's saying doesn't make sense, right? Why are people listening to him, right? It's just like a random person that might be sitting on a bus. If he came from round here, right, with our accent, I'm from Medway, I kind of have a mixed accent, but um, our Medway accent round here, if these, if, if Angela and Tom sounded like people from round here and they were saying these things on a bus, right? People on the bus would just be like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> listen to them over there, you know? It wouldn't be this status attached to them. But yeah, he is a victim of his own misfortune, which doesn't make sense. Like that's gotta be the ultimate victim blaming. I've, the biggest victim blaming sentence I've ever heard, I think. The victim of his own misfortune. How can you be the victim of your own misfortune? It doesn't make sense. He's the one who caused the problem in the first place. And again, it doesn't make sense because what in terms of being stalked when he was a child like being born like <laughs> he caused the problem in the first place and he's asked by one of the presenters but why did he cause the problem in the first place and and he says because he was loved when he was married he was loved by the public and he had huge approval ratings and then he trashed the brand by lying now i believe this is susanna susanna says but this goes way back before his marriage to megan i mean it's actually got nothing to do with megan has it and angela goes well it has she's geared him up and I have to say, I might put it on the screen, the face Susanna makes is priceless, right? I feel the same. Like, I'm not always a fan of Susanna Reid. I think she's very complicit. But in this moment, I felt spiritually connected to her. <laughs> My face was doing the same thing as hers. So she says, I'm sorry, what's your evidence that she's geared him up for it? Right, so asked for evidence. And again, this is the projection, right? Because Angela Levin has said oh, Harry shouldn't come forward because he's going to get grilled. You know, he's not going to like that. He might walk off the set. You know, he's not going to like being questioned. But in the past, I believe Angela Levin is like, I think it was Vanessa Feltz or somebody who spoke to her and she got really angry because she was being interviewed on something and Vanessa was sort of firing back, you know, and saying, well, why do you think that? And putting like counterpoints across. And Angela got really angry about it. Right? It was actually her that couldn't take any sort of questioning because what she's doing doesn't have any basis in reality. You know, it, it really is just pure hatred and when you start asking questions, it falls apart. So Susanna asks, all she asks is, I'm sorry, but where's your evidence that she's geared him up for this? You know, quite a big claim. Well, let's go back to the basics on this. 
Where has the evidence come out in the last five weeks in court that Harry was hacked? Because I haven't read it. I think that one was Angela. I transcribed this. So at some points, you know, Tom answers for Angela and Angela answers for Tom. It's like they've become this kind of united front of we've got to protect ourselves here because we're kind of looking like the bad guys because we are. <laughs> Well, this isn't going how we plan. But you know, so you're asked for evidence, like, sorry, where's your evidence that Megan has geared him up for this? And then it's anyway, back to the basics. It's like, no, you were asked a question, like, you've got a lot to say here. So you're you're saying that he can't handle being questioned. So you've just made an accusation. Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> Do you want to explain why you think that? And they can't, right? So they just go on to something else. Uh, and this person says, I, I don't know if it was Angela or Tom, where's the evidence come out in the last five weeks in court that Harry was hacked because I haven't read it? And I'm just sitting there thinking, that's why it's going through the court. Am I? Surely, surely other people are watching these individuals and thinking, why are they on the television? You know, oh, there's no proof yet because it's yet to go through court. That's why it's going through the court. That's the process. That's why it's all happening, right? And again, like, think about how twisted this is because they're not neutral. Right, so imagine they were thinking, okay, I don't want to have a position until it goes through the court. Which in itself is, is difficult in a lot of ways because the system in this country is, there is a lot of power involved in the court system still, right? It's about who has money, who can pay for good lawyers, and, you know, there are structures at play, and there are things that make it very difficult for victims to come forward in this country. But say you're being completely neutral on this, you just wouldn't have a position, right? But that's not their position. They've not seen any evidence yet that Harry was hacked, therefore he's a terrible liar, and he's still a liar as the victim, as the alleged victim, until they can prove it. Like, that's not even neutral. If they were truly neutral, they wouldn't be taking a side at all until it had gone through court. And then either Tom or Angela says, I know the Mirror's done a lot of hacking, but they deny that they ever hacked Harry. And he hasn't produced the evidence, and that's critical of the next three days. And Susanna Reid says, well, <laughs> that's the purpose of the court. <laughs> She's right. And rather than be embarrassed, I believe this is Tom, I'm not completely sure. Um, they say, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And what Harry is doing is, he's actually putting himself up to be, if he's unlucky, destroyed. Because the Mirror will be absolutely entitled to test his credibility, and he's never gone through that process before. So again, it's the narrative that, you know, he's not ready for this, he's going to be absolutely destroyed by the Mirror. He shouldn't have come forward, not because he's lying, <laughs> but because, wow, he's going to get grilled. You know, great message, ITV, love that that's going out there. Okay, then one of the interviewers says this, and that, that is what the court process will do. So what do you think the family think of this, the royal family? Because you've been a biographer of his father. What does King Charles think of this? Um, and basically, to paraphrase, they basically ask, you know, whether they think the king will approve or disapprove of this. And again, I'm not sure why they're asking Tom and Angela this, because again, it goes back to what Harry said, doesn't it, right? But these royal experts or royal reporters are actually part of the system. So asking them this seems to imply that they do have that connection with the royals. And if they don't have that connection, then once again they're phonies because they're propping themselves up as these kind of experts when they have no knowledge anyway. So whatever's happening here, it's corrupt. Okay, and I believe this is Tom, and he says, well, I'm sure they think it's absolutely unwise and mad because he can't win from it. He's got six cases running and he's on a mission to change the media. And the old saying, don't complain, don't explain, stands in this case absolutely, because he hasn't got the evidence. And undoubtedly they were briefing about him, the palace, during his days with William as a young man, when he got into his drug trouble and all the rest of it. But that's in the past and it has nothing to do with hacking. So in that answer itself, right, we've got, oh, uh, we can't say for sure, but yeah, the family disapproves. So they've got Harry, how dare a victim come forward because it's apparently bringing shame on their family? Why is nobody thinking that's sick? If someone in your family is coming forward about something like that, why on earth are you not supporting them? Right, that's just common sense to me. So unwise and mad. Mad. This is what they said to Diana. This is what they say to abuse victims, right? It's mad to go up against power. It makes you crazy. You're a crazy person for going up against power because you can't win. So ITV is basically telling its viewers don't go up against the power structures, guys, because there's no point, right? You'll look mad, it's unwise, and you won't win. So, you know, better just move on and be positive about the whole thing, eh? He brings up the whole don't complain, don't explain thing, even though they're literally advocating for the royals in that moment. So I wouldn't say the royals are voiceless in this situation. He also admits weirdly that, yes, the palace was briefing about him, 
during his days with William, during his drug trouble, bringing in the drug trouble, of course. And again, they do this with victims. They will assess everything in a victim's life. And people who've been abused and who are victims, right, most likely will have something that makes them look bad to the public because when you're going through a situation like that especially when it starts young you're going to develop some very poor coping mechanisms right so you might become an addict right you might struggle with with drugs or alcohol you might be an angry person you might have mental health difficulties which might make you seem unstable like you're already set up when you're in that situation to be someone that later on they can point at you and invalidate you right and really you've become those things because you're trying to cope with the trauma you're going through. But they'll then use that to say, therefore there was no trauma because they were a bad person all along. I can't believe that. He's, he's saying that, yes, sure, the palace briefed about him. Okay. <laughs> we're not gonna probe that a little bit? Do you wanna, do you wanna you know, indulge us on that? Give us a bit more? But no, we of course, the drug trouble because Harry's just a bad, bad boy. You know, about everyone, no one forget, no one forget that he had trouble with drugs, everyone. It's not relevant to this situation, but you know, just wanna bring that out. <laughs> I can't believe he ends that with, but that's in the past and it has nothing to do with hacking. I, I Literally, the sentence you said just before that about Harry and drugs also has nothing to do with the hacking. <laughs> or if it does, it's not the way it's being presented right now. You know, we don't know at what times Harry was being allegedly hacked, etc. That will all come out in the court. Um, I'm not a legal expert on this, but bringing up all these things, like calling him mad and talking about his drug use, and basically making him seem unstable and dangerous and negative that has nothing to do with this which is a victim coming forward about alleged phone hacking right they are literally they are trying to smear the victim before they even know what the evidence is before they've even got an answer okay so ed balls says this so when you say he can't win i mean in the outset of these proceedings, MGM, in their opening papers they submitted, they did say that Harry and two or three other complainants were due compensation because of unlawfully gathered information. You could say he's won already. And again, I'm not the greatest Ed Balls fan, but he's absolutely right to say this. That's completely true. Harry is entitled to compensation because obviously there has been wrongdoing, right? And that should be huge news, but it's not. Why is it not huge news? I wonder why not. Oh, it's because the media, right? <laughs> They're giving us the news. So clearly they're not going to be like, oh yeah, by the way, we got found out. <laughs> Just so you know. You know, we had to pay up because, you know, we were kind of found to be pretty bad. You know, they're not going to be putting that out there, are they? And that's why it's like ITV and the BBC, they're letting everyone down so much, right? They're letting all of us down. They're letting down every single abuse victim in this country and beyond right anyone who watches this because the tabloids are behaving in this manner right because they're scared and because they're being taken to court what excuse does the bbc have what excuse does itv have essentially abusive power structures will always defend each other and protect each other even if they don't personally align because they want the freedom to still behave the way they are and i think they know it's a slippery slope that if it starts with the tabloids and they get kind of taken out and held to account then oh no things might start to move and then we might get found out for not actually being neutral <laughs> oh no maybe we've been telling lies too but no we're good we're the bbc we're icv we'd never do that harry's just bad okay and this is what tom says i believe it's tom oh it is tom there's a weird phrase here what happened was i love that what happened was he knows they sent one man to a club to see what he'd done in one of his mad jinxes there. But that isn't what he's claiming now. He is claiming through his lawyers, mass hacking. Worse than that, he's also claiming that his landlines were tapped, that his home was broken into, all sorts of things which have not been proven in court yet. And that's the problem for him. I think he's become the tool of this hacked off group by Hugh Grant and others. And he has walked into a lion's den without realising the great dangers he's put himself into. Okay, so what happened was they sent one man to a club to see what he'd done. As if, oh, that's fine, sure. Well, that's still bad. <laughs> oh, it's all right, guys. <laughs> that's weird, right? Paying somebody to go, quick, go spy on that person we don't know, like sneak in there and figure out what's going on so we can put it in our newspapers. That's bad, right? How is that not like the starting point of, wow, that's really bad. And actually the fact that that's happened is making me think maybe there's some truth to the other things, <laughs> right? One of his mad jinxes. I've never heard that phrase before in my life. I. I don't know what that, I don't even know what it means. So Tom says that he's claiming through his lawyers mass hacking and that he's claiming land lies were tapped. Why does he say it like this? Worse, that he's also claiming. Like, 
the claims apparently yeah they're bad claims but it's acting like harry is being so awful for making these terrible claims like how dare he how dare he make such claims uh he says that he thinks because they've not yet been proven in court that's going to be a problem for him and again it's like well the court has it's just begun <laughs> so that's what the court is for but also what i want to say here as well is harry's the way he's dealing with this just from myself you know just speaking as somebody who i don't talk about it very much in these videos but i'm a survivor etc and i've gone through some systems like that you know i have experience in this area and sometimes it's not about and i mean this in politics too sometimes it's not about necessarily whether you win or lose sometimes it's about using your voice and speaking the truth and it does something for you and it does something for the people that come after you and even if it just helps one person to think i'm gonna do that too if more people show solidarity and act like that we live in a better world so i actually don't think it's ultimately i don't think the aim is necessarily even to prove it in court obviously that's going to be what they hope for and i really hope they can but the idea is that these newspapers have so much power right they can silence people they can scare people and what harry is doing is saying you don't scare me i'm not going to settle and i'm going to speak you can smear me, you can do whatever you like, you can character assassinate me, but I will speak and I will be heard. And anyone who's interested will listen, right? And we will, because we know what these tabloids are like. So I can see, you know, whatever comes out of this, you know, whatever is proved, even if they've got a lot of stuff, they will still, I predict, say things like, oh, but this particular claim wasn't substantiated. When it doesn't mean that didn't happen, it just means that there's it's not substantiated to a certain degree that it can be in court. Which is very difficult because again, it's on the victim to prove these things. And if you're if you're a teenager who's being stalked, right? How on earth are you supposed to, while being that victim, also like maintain like information gathering and get yourself ready for? Oh, I might have to take this to court. You know, I need to get all the phone hacking stuff together. Like, of course you're not you're not going to be doing that you're already you know it's unbalanced from the start isn't it and again the idea that he's walked into a lion's den he's a tool of this group of hugh grant again this idea that oh harry's harry's just a follower because they still want harry back if he'll leave megan that he's just misled um he's just a child an angry child and he's walked into a lion's den without realizing the great dangers he's put himself into right the great dangers he's put himself into it shouldn't be like that's a confession in itself it shouldn't be a great danger to stand up in court and have your time to speak and try and get some justice right that is admitting that these are dangerous enemies to have and that the papers will rip him apart right and the fact that's admitted and everyone just goes along with that makes me sick because yeah he is putting himself into great danger by doing this but that's not something to like further beat him with is it it's we should be saying like wow how brave how incredibly brave that someone would do that right that someone would take that stand because a lot of people have thought no it's not for me it's not for my career i can't take it and i don't blame those people because it's so unique to different people's situations you know some people for example will have a lot of anxiety and stress and the idea of going through that might really negatively impact their mental health to the point they can't cope you know and unfortunately that is what the tabloids count on right they make it completely unlivable and that's what happens in abuse systems they make it so unlivable that a person just thinks i can't i can't go through it i can't deal with it so some people have taken the payoff and i don't want to kind of i don't want to judge that because i understand it is scary it's terrifying you know but harry's someone who said you know what i'll do it i'll be the shield and i will i will go forward and i'll do that and again, I've said this in other videos, I think it's because he's actually taken the life of service thing to heart. Because if you look at William taking the payout, and again, I, I do think it's probably been difficult for him and I don't know what they've got on him, considering they've been following him since he was younger. I imagine if William ever did by some miracle turn, I think they've got plenty on William and I think they would not hesitate to do that, right? To put that out there and make him a hate figure. And I think that must be frightening. No matter what you might think of William, just on a human level they've got a lot on him i believe i think that if you're in a position if you believe in the life of service right and you're going to become a monarch and you believe you're going to do that i do think you have a responsibility then if you truly believe in the life of service to do what's right for the people i don't think having a monarch is good for the people at all but if that's what you believe and it's what harry believes right very sincerely it's what he believes because his actions consistently show that that's his world for you and it's very sincere for him then you should be willing to put yourself out as a bit of a shield, right? And take that. 
And I'm not saying, you know, William shouldn't even have to, you know, he should never have been, neither of them should have been born into this horrible system. Diana shouldn't have been groomed into this awful system. They shouldn't have been mistreated. They didn't make the mess. But the fact that Harry is now being smeared as the villain, right? When it takes someone of incredible bravery to be the person that goes up against it, right? William didn't even go up against it. And he's got a lot more support because he's the heir, right? It's taken the spare to do it. And he's done this throughout with a hate campaign that is so brave and that is just not what i'm seeing it's just so unfair it makes me angry because even people who don't like him can they not even acknowledge the bravery of that okay uh susanna reed then takes on angela levin and i must say i enjoyed this bit i very much enjoyed this bit angela you said you think that he's moaning and whining and whinging and being negative i'm not sure just set aside for a moment this particular case i'm not sure why people are still so negative about prince harry I mean, he has had a tough upbringing. He lost his mum. <laughs> Angela makes a noise at this point. She goes, hmm. Hmm. He believes, as many people do, that if she hadn't been pursued by paparazzi that night, the accident would not have happened. He's got real reasons to be aggrieved because of the treatment of his wife. You may agree with some of the claims they make. You may disagree with what she said. But the fact remains, people are endlessly negative about Harry and Meghan in the press. I wanted to cheer at this point. I don't even like Susanna Reid. But I thought, do you know what? <laughs> Well done. <laughs> it made me happy to see it. It did make me it did make me happy. Like and that's how bad the stuff is here because they're still platforming these awful people and it should not be happening and it's victim blaming. The small victories we have in this current climate with this situation is oh the interviewer gave a balanced, you know, all oh, they they gave a counterpoint everyone and we're cheering like at last. <laughs> But that's what we should expect from the start. These people shouldn't even be being platformed. Okay, Angela Levin says this. Harry was very, very popular. I spent 15 months with him when I wrote his biography. He was fantastic. He was charismatic. And she's talking like as in he was formally. Susanna says, but if you see the response to these discussions this morning, you know that he's still very popular. Angela then says, well, um, I don't think that that's um, relevant, actually. <laughs> these people if you've known them in your own life right i guarantee you'll know at least one right they're so funny because they'll dish it out right they'll say all these arrogant pompous things and then you might say why do you think that or are you not embarrassed to have said that and they suddenly go oh um um i don't want to speak anymore um yeah uh anyway let's talk about other things <laughs> so funny there's like a certain mold and once you've met one version of the mold you've met them all <laughs> Susanna says, but you just said he used to be popular and he isn't anymore, but he's still very popular with people. She goes, no, he isn't. His popularity in this country in America has gone through the floor. And that is because he's been, one, because he's attacking his family, taking out his vengeance on his family because he's been incredibly rude. He's also broken into their privacy. I mean, he talked about William being circumcised, which has got nothing to do with his own health or his own life. And that's in his book, Spare. Okay, so I kind of said this at the start of the video. Like, I do believe the British public is being turned against Harry and Meghan in a certain demographic, a very loud demographic, like they are, I don't think there's any way to kind of get around the fact that there has been a smear campaign and it's been over such a long period of time that I do think in some ways it's been successful with certain people. However, I also think it's very true that despite, desp there is a real radicalised hatred among certain people, which is becoming more violent and more hateful, right? Real feelings of harm wanting to come to Harry and Meghan and people feeling more desensitised. You know, I stand by what I said in another video, which is that to some people, they've been so dehumanised at this point that I don't think they care about them as human beings. That being said, there is obviously huge support still for Harry and Meghan, especially in the younger generations. I think a lot of people of colour, I think, and people from minority groups sometimes can kind of see what's going on. I think a lot of abuse victims um, and people who are used to these systems might be twigging. I think a lot of people, for example, uh, like on the left, we saw the same thing happen to Jeremy Corbyn. I'm seeing a lot of leftists now who wouldn't really care about royal stuff a bit like me, thinking, wait a minute, I, I recognise that playbook. I can see something if he's going on there. You know, there is support for Harry. And we do know that because, you know, he's not irrelevant. They're still filming him all the time and trying to get pictures of him and putting him on the front of their magazines and endlessly talking about him. People are interested in Harry. He's got a lot of support among different groups. He's got quite a few support bases. So he's got young people are really quite into him. I see a lot of social media young people like thinking, why are they doing this? It's bizarre. Um, a lot of people of colour, a lot of people who are marginalised, abused. You've got people who are 
on the left and would support whistleblowers. You've got a lot of the armed forces and veterans who are very supportive of Harry. There are quite a few groups that wouldn't usually align on these issues that have aligned here, right? It's quite interesting. So there is a support base right? And it's undeniable that this exists, otherwise they wouldn't need to keep putting him down, right? Because they're scared of it. And Angela goes back to this, oh, he's been attacking his family and he's rude. And first of all, you know, we don't need to get into that, it's ridiculous, that's not what's happened. But also, again, irrelevant. Irrelevant. This is him talking about potential phone hacking. This is not what we do when a victim comes forward about something. We don't go, oh, let's list every bad thing we think they've ever done, which has no relevance to this. <laughs> Right? It doesn't make sense. It's not normal behaviour. Taking out his vengeance on his family. He's been incredibly rude. Like, they're just projecting. He's broken into their privacy. And she talks about... This makes me angry. I've got to say this right. Oh, he talks about William being circumcised. Excuse me, what? Right. I've read the book. He mentions about being circumcised or not. Because he's, he's talking about how before he and William even had a chance, you know, to, to define themselves... This was in the press. This was a talking point. Grown adults were speculating about whether he and William had been circumcised. Spare is, although it's presented as this, you know, narcissistic thing. And can I just say, even if it was just somebody talking about their life story, that's fair enough anyway. Everyone has the right to do that. Like, <laughs> he can do that if he wants. But specifically with Spare, he's putting a counter out, right, to all these these awful stories, the misinformation, the smears that have been put out against about, about him and against him. This is him telling the story. This is him countering by saying, basically, this is what happened to my, in my memory. This is how I experienced it. Um, don't necessarily believe everything you read. Everything in there is, is countering, right? That's the structure of his book. And that's kind of why he made the book, right? To put his own story out in his own words, which is an act of bravery. When you've been smeared and maligned, it's, in, you know, just to do that, whether or not people believe it or read it, it's it's a really good thing to do. He doesn't just randomly start talking about William being circumcised. Like, it's just a lie. And it's ridiculous. Like, that should have been straight away. She shouldn't have been on the show. But I would have said, like, do you want to explain that? Because <laughs> that's not what happened, is it? He's talking about how people were speculating about them, right? And he is then answering the speculation with the general vibe being how weird it was that people were speculating about it. So Ed Balls then says, so better he's been caught attacking the mirror rather than attacking his father and his brother. And she, he says this like a kind of I've got you thing. And like, I'm glad he's getting at them. But also, I don't like the way they're playing into, oh, but at least he's attacking the mirror rather than his family. Harry didn't attack the family, right? I'm fed up of this. Someone advocating for themselves, right? <laughs> and wanting decent treatment is not attacking people, right? This victim blaming mentality we have here in the UK is terrifying. Angela Levin then says, no, he's just resentful of everybody around his earlier life. And Tom chimes in with another one of his great comments. <laughs> Title of a good book, Revenge. <laughs> and then Angela starts laughing. And I'm sitting there thinking, that wasn't funny, why are you laughing? It's not even a good title of a good book, Revenge. That's the level of intellect we're at here in this interview, right? We've got a posh accent, but we've got no... We've got no information, no, like, what does that mean? <laughs> Title of a good book, that, revenge. Is that, what is that? I, I feel like I'm going insane even talking about that. <laughs> they're in this completely delusional world where they're, they're in on this, this long running joke. Oh, we're so bonded by how much we hate him. Ha ha ha, revenge. That's a good name for a book. Ha ha ha, yes. Like, okay, then they move on to other matters, so. Uh, the interviewer says, well, yes, look at the most recent report about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, other than what happened this week. It's that, Tom, they are reportedly going to stop talking about what's happened in the past. They're not going to criticise the royal family anymore. There are no more tell-all Netflix documentaries, no more memoirs. I mean, I think we understood that Meghan might bring out her own, but it won't criticise the royal family. And Angela gives another of her, huh, Huh, in the background. <laughs> They're not going to take part in interviews that reveal the inner workings of the royal family. Will that satisfy you? And Tom Bauer says, not at all. <laughs> Why not, they ask? Because I don't believe it for a moment. Neither do I, says Angela. Then Tom says, 
ha ha, it's nonsense, they've got nothing else in their lives. The brand is about knocking the royal family and promoting themselves. They've done a terrible mistake. The brand could have been like the Kardashians or like the Beckhams. It could have been an amazing success. Instead, it's a brand which is tainted by dishonesty and discredit. And again, Susanna Reid is starting to get really angry at this point. Right, before we get to that bit, I, I object to the whole line of, of questioning anyway, right? Oh, anyway, we've heard that they're going to stop attacking the rules. We've heard they're going to shut up. I just want to say it doesn't matter if they, like, wanted to forevermore talk about the situation. That is their right. That is the right of a victim. It's no one's business how much a victim talks about it, how they talk about it, right? That's not... Are we in that world? You know, like, are we really going to be like, oh, you've had your time now, you've said it, and now that's it, you're done. You know, they don't have to be completely silent and not talk as a consequence of this. Like, that's not, what world are we living in? That's not a reasonable expectation to make. I mean, it might be that they don't want to and they want to move forward, etc, etc. That's fine. But it's not for anyone else to tell them, oh, this is when you stop and you've got to stop doing it now. No, they don't have to stop. You know, it's ridiculous. Imagine being told, right, as, as a person who isn't in the public eye, imagine being told that something that's devastated you in your life or an experience in your life, you have to not talk about it anymore by total strangers. Wouldn't you just say, by what right? Like, what right have you got? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> I'll talk about what I want, thanks. But even this, even this being put to them, you know, the idea that they never speak about it again, right? Will it satisfy you? And the answer is no. Because it's not about that, is it? It's about completely smearing and destroying them. They don't want them to thrive. They don't want them to be happy. They can sit there and say, oh, we just want them to be positive And oh, we just want them to have a happy family life. No, you don't. Don't even lie. Like, it's so obvious that's not what they want. They want to torment that family. They want them punished. That's what it is. It is a punishment. It is ultimate retribution. And they can never do enough, right? They will never be anything they can do. Or nothing Meghan can do. Harry can come back, right? He'll be welcome back. But the cost is his family, right? The cost is Meghan. And the children and the life they have and his freedom. There's no way back for Meghan because they just want to see her punished. And you cannot tell me that's not rooted in racism right? They just want to forevermore see her punished. They don't want to see her happy or thriving or moving on. They don't want to see her breathing, right? She has committed a grave sin. She has stepped out of her place, right? She's she's thought herself above and now she has to be punished forever and that's all that will satisfy them and they will enjoy it. Okay, but this is what Susanna says and I loved this. Don't you think there's an irony in that you criticise Harry and Meghan being negative and criticising the royal family and making their careers out of it? But you both sit here and you make your names and careers knocking Harry and Meghan. And again, predictable response here. So Angela Levin goes into that mode that we've all seen and heard, I'm sure. <laughs> if you haven't, you're lucky. No, but, but that's that's because... No, 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 it's actually malfunctioning at this point. Because, you know, people like this, abusive people like this, they just malfunction at that point. Like, if you just say to them, why are you doing this? They just, no, 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 it's not relevant, it's not relevant anymore, I don't want to talk anymore, like, that, that's what they do, because they're cowards, and ultimately, it's shameful for them, right, they don't want to think about it, you put them on the spot and say, why would you do that, it's, it's so shameful to see what they've become, that they just, no, I don't want to talk about it anymore, oh, no, 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 I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm leaving, it's what Piers Morgan did, right, someone said to him, um, his co-presenter said, why, why don't you leave Megan alone, Oh, I, I don't like this, I'm off. I'm off, I'm out. Like, they're just so childish. They're so emotionally childish. And yet they present their victims as emotionally childish. And Tom tries to say, Oh, no, no, I make my name writing about Ed Balls. Ha ha ha, that was years ago. And he tries to, like, pal up with Ed Balls now. So they're both sitting there, like, they're not hateful individuals, thinking they're gonna, like, laugh their way through. Like, oh, it's all fun and games. We're here victim blaming on ITV in the morning. <laughs> Aren't we all good friends? It's all fine. Water under the bridge. Yet you question them once and they get so offended. Like they couldn't handle a day. These people could not handle a single day being treated the way that Harry and Meghan are. And it brings me back to Philip Schofield. And I'm not getting into that situation in this video. But what I will say is that it's very interesting that when it comes to these people who have been so part of it, feeling even a tiny part of that, right? For a small amount of time, they can't cope. The discomfort is too much. It's like torture to them. 
but they're so happy to inflict it on other people there's no empathy so angela's saying oh no that's not it at all that's that's not it how silly and you'll notice they go into that mode of oh no how foolish how ridiculous oh no and tom says this he's the one who started it by going on to opera winfrey he says opera winfrey and saying all those things with megan which were not true and started the ball rolling he could have gone off to america and produced an amazing brand of goodness and health and Susanna cuts in and says, but you can't deny it's lucrative for you both. And Tom says, well, your fees don't cover it. Ha ha ha. And Angela says, no, it's nothing to do with it. Just talking about them because you do know them. I spent a lot of time with him in the day. Then Tom says, we believe in the royal family. And Angela says, I believe very much in the royal family. And Tom says, and he has damaged the royal family and him arriving today. And he's damaging the country too. And in that very short section there right and if you can watch this i'm gonna i'll put the link in the description box if you can find it on twitter it might be better because giving them views might not be the best idea but it's up to you if you want to look you can i'll put it in the description box but um but you'll see like it's all laid bare in this moment right it's this desperate sort of deflection followed by but he's he started it and you know he's against the country and he did this and he did that it's really childish it's incredibly hyper emotional they always accuse their victims of being hyper emotional but that's what they're being they've made it personal for whatever reason it's become a slight against them and i don't know why or what's going on with them that they've connected as if they're part of the royal family i don't know what's happening there but it's like they feel they've been personally victimized we've got angela giving her weird ownership by saying oh it's all right because i know him as if that makes it any better to me that actually makes it worse because you've met the human being right the actual person so where's your excuse you know that's a living breathing person that you've had dealings with and then you've got that we believe in the royal family yes we believe in the royal family therefore believing in the royal family the confession is embedded right believing in the royal family means you have to victim blame and destroy harry and megan and you know people try and say oh the royal family aren't complicit and they're not part of this system why is it then that it ultimately comes down to but we're pro the royal family which means destroying harry and megan like are people just people are so willfully ignorant at this point like it's so easy to put the stuff together. Okay, and Angela comes in with this. I'm almost done. Sorry, this is long. Angela says, and can I just say this? You can't expect people to be interested in someone who is a producer or a director in the same way they've been interested in them. They're going to be behind the cameras, they say, and producing by there. It will be incredibly boring. Netflix just threw out something Megan wanted to do. She will be in charge. Netflix are no longer going to do anything with them. They won't be out of the public eye. We get photographers who see when Megan and has a new hairstyle and ed balls says so any advice to give them other than keep quiet and stay away uh, and tom says it's about doing good play the long game he should now stop the court cases because he can't win in the end and he should go back to what he intended to do which was to preach goodness angela then says and to have a happy life with his family looking forward not backwards and susanna says Angela and Tom, thank you very much indeed. Okay, let's go back over that very last portion. So Angela's saying, oh, you can't expect someone to be interested in them, you know, if they're behind the screen, if they're directing. First of all, she has no idea. Obviously, she's interested because she's talking about it. I would say, why would anyone be interested in what she's saying, right? The only reason she's got relevance right now, let's be completely honest, is because she speaks badly about Harry and Meghan. That's her whole thing. Nobody's asking for Angela Levin, right, and her takes on anything else. No one's like, oh, I wonder what wise Angela Levin thinks about this, <laughs> right? She's just another go-to troll. That's her whole career. That's her importance here. And then she says as well, she says, oh, but they won't be out of the public eye. We get photographers who see when she has a new hairstyle. That's not Meghan's fault, is it? How these people, I can't even believe it. Like, yeah, they are relentlessly following whatever they do. And that is not Meghan and Harry's fault, right? Somehow you have managed to yet again victim blame right till the last, till the very end of this. Then Tom has the audacity to say, oh, it's about doing good and play the long game. What do you mean play the long game? This is about justice and it's about truth and doing what's right. Some of us don't see life like a game, right? Some of us aren't playing this long career game. Some of us are sincere and we want to be real and we want to just do what we think is right because we think it's right. He says that he can't win in the end, but I think that's that depends on your opinion like what do you think of winning i think him even coming forward with this and being heard and not being silenced is a form of winning in itself and to finish with angela's uh, and to have a happy life with his family looking forward not backwards i think that's pretty clear if you look at angela levin's output 
if you go on her Twitter, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> It'll make you angry. That is not what she wishes, right? But again, it's putting that slight gaslighty, it's putting a nice sort of veneer on something which has been completely rotten, right? It's ending it with care. They're both ending this complete tirade with, oh, but we wish him all the best. It's so fake. Right, so anyway, that's the BBC today. That's ITV today. Um, we'll update you soon. I was gonna, um, I was gonna give you some more uh, newspaper covers and magazine covers and the other day I kind of had to leave the store because I was actually caught taking some photos <laughs> but I'll put you in on that next time because this one's quite long so I'll see you really soon um, obviously wishing Harry luck by the time this is out we'll probably have heard from him I think but um, yeah hope it goes well and I hope you guys all really well let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you really soon okay love you bye